And two of America's leading animators, Jared Mark and Mark Warshaw, are co-founders of Bureau of Magic, a Los Angeles-based multi-platform production company specializing in creating and producing signature animated and live-action entertainment. Their projects have been nominated for 15 Emmys, winning four, including Outstanding Children's Animated Program. They are the creative force behind the animated series Lost in Oz, now streaming on Amazon and broadcasting on major networks throughout the world, including Nickelodeon and Disney. Jared and Mark are visiting Nigeria to lead week-long animation workshops for Nigerian tech, entrepreneurs, filmmakers, producers, story writers, high school students, and science teachers. Mark and Jared are here live with me in the studios right now. Great to have you, gentlemen. Great to be here. It's, a, it's good to be. It's a Friday. Thank you so much. So, uh, I'm <laughs> sure you Friday. take a good time. Happy Friday for everyone, and, and it's a good time to, to relax a bit. Uh, uh, 15 nominations for Emmys, winning four. That must be really great. Let, let me start with you, uh, Mark. How, what was the inspiration for getting into animation? Well, we were in live action, and Jared came from actually... From live theater. From live theater. theater okay. And we, we've always loved that, all the different kinds of mediums of telling stories. But when we were um, approached to do an animated series, it was a kind of a dream come true for us. Mm -hmm. We grew up, obviously, watching cartoons, loved animation. And the beauty of animation is that whatever you imagine, you can make come to life. So all our dreams just kind of became reality as we built our stories around the animated it's content. Interesting, I've seen a lot of animation these days, even whiteboard animations that could really be interesting. Whiteboard animations. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, Jared. Yes. Uh, animation is just an incredible medium, and, and it's, it's, it is growing and growing around the world. Uh, worldwide audiences are, are seeming to embrace it, and it's, it's so exciting to be here, and meeting all these incredible filmmakers. You've done so much in the United States. So I'm wondering your interactions with emerging Nigerian animators. What have you observed about around the animation industry in Nigeria, Mac? So far, the, the passion is kind of off the charts. And the creativity and the actual stories that are ready to be told here through the animation medium, they're um, in a place where it's time to go. It's not there yet. And that's why we came here. We came here and we really could feel it with the people that we worked with all week long here in Nigeria. There's um, a richness of the stories to be told that are coming out of Nigeria and people want to tell those stories and to go into the past or project into the future with the tools that animation provides. There, it's just really, we're kind of hitting that perfect moment mm -hmm. where it's time for these storytellers' stories to be heard globally. Interesting, Jared, when we talk about local animators in, in Nigeria, um, where do you think the emphasis should be moving forward from your interactions so far? I think that there's a really, something we've witnessed this week, something that we've witnessed at home, something that we've always witnessed in, in this collaborative art. No one person can make an animated series or film or game on their own. It is by nature collaborative. And what we're witnessing and what we at such a, a honor of being a little bit part of is the connections of these individual artists and helping to foster new connections, new collaborations, you know, connecting artists with producers, writers, with animators, and to see that and to be part of that and then the beauty of all of this is that, you know, as we've seen throughout the pandemic, as, the, as we've all been commuting virtually, you know, we can continue to keep up these relationships, to continue to ideally collaborate with them ourselves uh, from all the way back home. I'm just uh, looking at what Mark's talking about. So when you look at uh, animation, you say collaboration, is it about sitting down on, on, on a laptop, on a system, and using whatever it is to create it? Um, what really is the first step when you want to go into animation, really? What do you need to get right? You gotta get your story right first. That's the most important thing. So we, we're in a country where storytelling, I mean, Nollywood is one of the best producers of stories on the planet. So we already know that can happen here. So it st starts with story, and it starts with scripting, and then the next step is storyboarding, getting the sort of the black and white drawings out mm -hmm. there. And we were just at a studio today, we were at Spoof Animation Studios here in Lagos, 
we were watching these amazing storyboard artists, a whole room full of them. And you can tell that they're on the level that is, a, a, is the pro level scale. And they can get out there and we can collaborate. When we do our productions, we do them with people all over planet Earth. People in Tokyo, people in Canada, people in Scotland, people in Malaysia. And there's no reason we can't start now working with the people here in Nigeria who do that part. And so we've also met great people who started studios here who learned how to animate just by watching YouTube videos. So it's, we're in a point now where the tools are so democratized, right? It's the barrier of entry is much lower. You can go and learn on YouTube and download an app to teach yourself how to animate, something like a Procreate, and that allows for a whole industry of people to start to really teach themselves and get going. In what field of animation would you like to see Nigerian animators play? Is it uh, producing animation for corporate organizations, for example, for marketing, for advertising, or for storytelling about big movies? Yes. All of the above. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that every single one of those that you mentioned and, yeah. and, and, and more. Uh, it's a whole portfolio. It yeah. truly is. Well, and we're, you know, this is a global business report, right? And we were talking to a lot of the people that own the studios here. Yes. And because there is no funding, truly, for a lot of animated content here in Nigeria, people have to balance their portfolio of the jobs that they take. So we're seeing that a lot of them are taking advertising jobs to pay the bills, while they're at the same time simultaneously putting that money back into their own projects so they can own their own IP, their own intellectual property, mm. which is key. You want to be able to own your own intellectual property as much as possible. If you're starting to build an industry, that's something that is really important for these people. How, uh, Jared, for example, so when you talk about funding in an environment such as the US, how, how, does it, how do you come around that? The private equity, private investors, venture capital, angel investors? All, again, all of those are, are <laughs> all of those are, uh, are are avenues. There are also versions of getting grant money, mm. uh, NGOs, um, uh, corporate uh, brand sponsorship. There's yeah. branded entertainment. There's mm. there's really uh, the whole spectrum of possibilities. Mm. And as the nature of advertising continually changes, those branded opportunities change as well. And and so we find. You know, with every new platform, there becomes a new, a new screen where you can put your content. And, uh, and so brands, brands are becoming the studios too. But in, you know, in America, we have obviously a hundred year old industry where studios actually fund the content. Yeah. We have no, very little state sponsored sort of uh, incentives or subsidies. We yeah. do on the local, much more local level. So state by state versus like a federal government. So some of our states who have done that, implemented subsidies such as that, have seen tremendous economic growth around the animation and Hollywood industries occur. Something like Atlanta, Georgia is a really good example where previously they didn't have state funded subsidies. When they did that, they gave tax incentives. We saw huge production movement to those places and then thus large economic growth around them. And the supporting industries that grow up around that as well. So yeah. Well, are, are you folks in, in, in bigger animation industries, sectors like the U.S. in, in, in Hollywood and, and in Hollywood and, and, and all that, are you, are you willing to invest in Nigerian startup animators, Jared? Uh, I, I think that there, we have seen that there is a tremendous amount of talent. There are, there's a tremendous audience. Mm -hmm. This is a huge city in a huge country. And... Uh, and there's a tremendous appetite, I think, for local content. And not only locally, but there's a tremendous global diaspora. And beyond that, there's a huge international audience that I think is really beginning to discover the richness of local stories around the world and how those translate. Because ultimately, storytelling, filmmaking, it's, it's all about empathy. And the more we watch international stories, the more we cross-culturally connect. And so I think that where there are eyeballs watching those stories, advertisers and money and funding yeah, will anima follow. Anim 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 animated movies can make big blockbuster box offices, you know, I understand. Sh should animators be worried about copyright issues? Absolutely. Uh, Mac, uh, Mac? Absolutely. Sh should they? Yeah, I mean, you you want to copyright, you want to uh, intellectual property. I mean, I, I said it earlier. Yeah, I'll say it again. Intellectual property, owning your own. 
IP. And I think uh, something else that we've noticed here is, you know, when you're dealing with companies that are coming in and potentially wanting to get to work with you to have your stories, it's really important to understand the legalities of the contracts that you're signing. Yeah. You don't okay. want to sign away what your rights are mm. there. So I think that's another level of education that might have to happen here just from the, the various contacts that we've had this week. We mm. want to see people protected and you want you to protect yourselves because mm. Your IP is, is that's your product. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's. So you're here on the invitation of the U.S. Embassy to a series of workshops and all that. How would you describe the impact of your week-long engagement in Lagos? All we know is the experience that, that, that you know, from our point of view, it's, it's, it's truly been cross-cultural. It's been so wonderful and so impactful for us to, to meet all these incredibly talented people. And from what it seems like, it seems like we've been received really well. Um, it's been incredibly productive, creative, exciting, and fun okay. five days. Okay. And, Ma and uh, Mark? Yeah. I, give, me, give me a few I, seconds. I, I give me the party shot. I gotta say, it was, ma <laughs> it was magical. It truly was magical. No, that's, that's, that's animating. That, it, it, was, it was animation magic. Just the spirit of the Nigerian storytellers and the exchange of cultural okay. ideas. And it felt like there was a spark kind of ignited in the room that we were in. And we like to say that uh, community can build the industry. And we saw like the spark of community around the Nigerian community in animators, the Nigerian animation community, really seemed to come together this week. Okay, we want you back sometime in the future, in the near future. Can come back, come back again. We love that. From the Bureau of Magic. Thank you very much, Thank gentlemen. You, Thank, Thank you. you. Mark and Jared. Jared, it's good to have both of you here. And we sure deserve.